Hello and welcome to another edition of Lacrosse Technologies Tech Talk. I'm your host, Greg Peasel, and today we will be looking at your new 724-1710 version 2 wireless range station. We will point out the differences from version 1 and why these improvements were made. So, let's go! Because the differences between these two versions of this range station are not all that drastic, we decided this video would act more as support for the version 1 video, meaning we will show you the changes, explain how they will better serve you, and go more in depth on a few specific topics briefly covered in the first video. But we will not actually be doing the setup. If that is what you're looking for, please follow the link in the description below um, to link you back to the first video, which should cover all of that. Now. Here's a rundown of what we will cover in this video. First will be the hardware improvements, found mainly in the sensors. Next, we will go into greater detail about the location of the model numbers for the station as well as the sensors. After that, we will look at some very useful software changes. Then comes a more comprehensive demonstration of how to do a TX or transmission search for your temperature sensor. This is used to check to make sure the station and sensor are communicating correctly. And finally, in our Help Us Help You chapter, we will leave you with our information and the best way to get in touch with us should you have further questions about this product or others. When talking about how we could make this product even better for version 2, we focused on the rain count accuracy, as well as some simple aesthetics that could make its use more flexible to the end user. So we changed the temperature sensor completely, adding in its own display that will give you temperature in degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius right on the spot. And besides its new look, this sensor will also give you an added 30 feet in reception distance from the station itself allowing you to place it over 320 feet away without having to worry about connectivity problems. Keep in mind though, this does not account for walls, floors, or windows. Continuing on, the rain sensor also saw some helpful improvements. First, as you probably noticed, the color of the tipping cups has changed from black to white. This was purely an aesthetic choice to better fit the color scheme of the unit. The thing you wouldn't notice, however, is the new, highly polished surface of the cups. This new texture allows for consistent tipping and ultimately a more accurate rain count. So we realized our explanation of the model numbers in the version 1 video was kind of lacking and now that there are two different versions of this unit out there we figured we ought to do a better job. Alright, to review, if you've already watched the version 1 setup video the model numbers are indeed on the bottom of the station itself. By model numbers, I mean it not only includes the station's model number, but also the rain and temperature sensor that go with it as well. As for the sensors, their model numbers are printed right on the back or the bottom. Pay close attention though as to which model station and sensors you have, as you cannot mix and match. For instance, the TX17T temperature sensor will only work with the version 1 of the station and the new temperature sensor, the TX23T, will only work with the version 2 of the station, indicated by the V2 on the end. The same goes for the rain sensors as well. The TX17R will only work with version 1, and the TX23R will only work with version 2. For version 2, we made a couple of huge software changes that will not only make it easier to complete the setup when working through the settings menu, but we also give you the ability to customize what rain reading you'd like to see on your home page. If you recall, the settings menu of version 1 ended with the inches or millimeters setting, allowing you to choose which measurement you'd like the unit to display in. The way we had this displayed was just having the icon flash on the bottom right hand corner, where it is located on this screen. This, as you may have noticed, was a little hard to see. So for version 2, we changed this up a bit. The inches or millimeters setting will still be the final option in the settings menu. However, we moved its location to the middle of the screen when cycling through the settings. 
This makes it a bit more obvious as to what exactly you are changing. The biggest change to the software, however, was adding in the ability to choose what rain reading you'd like to see constantly on screen. Version 1 gave you the ability to cycle through the different readings to see the information, but would always revert back to the current rainfall setting. Now, with version 2, you cycle through these the same way by pressing and releasing the rain button, but wherever you stop is where the screen will stay. So, if you'd like to see your 24 hour total, for instance, simply press and release the rain button until the 24 hour total icon appears. This will then essentially become your new home screen and will not change until the rain button is pressed again. We covered this in the version 1 video, but it may have been a little confusing, because we had taken out the temperature sensor's batteries prior to shooting. This was designed to illustrate what it would look like if the connection was lost. However, we never really explained that. So just to cover our bases, we will run through a transmission search for your temperature sensor one more time. To better illustrate this, I will use both a version 1 and version 2 unit, as this part works the same on each. One though will start with a connection this one with the temp showing, and the other without, this one here with the dashes. To initiate the search, press and hold the down button on the back of the unit for 5 seconds. The dashes will appear and flash in the outdoor temperature location, indicating that it is searching for the information from the temperature sensor. The temperature will appear on the display when the reception is found. Now, if for some reason your temperature is still not displaying, after you have your station searching for its temperature sensor, go out and open up the sensor itself, like so. You will notice that inside, above the batteries, there is a TX or test button. Press and release this to force a transmission from the sensor to your station. In most cases, this should work. But as stated in the previous video, if dashes are still displayed, replace the batteries in the sensor and move it closer to the station itself. Alright, I think we covered everything, but if you think we missed something, or if you should have further questions about this product or others, please do not hesitate to ask in a comment below. That is what these videos and our social media channels are all about, getting you the information you need to know quickly and accurately. We are here to help you. So please follow us here on YouTube for the latest video content, like us here on Facebook for some personalized interaction, and follow us here on Twitter to join the conversation. In the meantime, we hope you enjoy your new wireless range station. I'm Greg Piesel, here for Lacrosse Technologies Tech Talk. We'll see you next time.